Hey everyone, it's Joe and Isaiah is here from The Automator and uh, we were doing a little more work on Bifidium. Zio has been doing some amazing stuff with updating it and Isaiah has been helping a lot, honestly. So, uh, but they're working, you know, collaborating somewhat and getting reviews, updating things. There's some new, new cool stuff we're not going to cover today, but today we're going to cover using a profile, which is, we, I know last week when we, we had troubles using it and it was really disheartening because we're like, that's a huge amount of value. Right. To be able to, <laughs> for what we do with auto hotkey, you know, being able to do stuff with your profile is, I don't want to say critical, but it's close to it. Right? Yeah, well, yeah, there is like, um, one thing is for you to use a, a how do I say, like a, a, a default profile for testing your website. Right. And another one is to actually automate your own, you know, your pages where you go usually and you say, like, I just want to go to this page, um, yeah. perform some things and go back. But I don't I want, want to be to logging in. My, like, yeah. my, my login info or I yeah. want to rip a couple, uh, something from this page. And that was what someone, I think it was on Reddit, was discounting the value of what we were doing. Yeah, like, just, uh, because, just because, yeah, just because you cannot access your profile. And I was like, yeah, well, what, what's the point then? I was like, yeah, it is... Uh, not that bad as you were trying to paint it, but in general, uh, now this is actually part of the class, so you can do it now, and 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 it is better easy, by the way. Well, it, it, just to be fair, in that critique, he was just criticizing in general how there's other like Python and other libraries that are far more robust at web scraping, and how this doesn't really do you know a lot. And I'm like, it, look, it allows people, people like me that aren't coders, to automate web page stuff. Like this is really cool. Hey, I know auto hotkey. Like this, now I can automate Chrome. This is really yeah. cool. So anyway, so why don't you go ahead and show, do an example here on how to use it with your, pro, I guess, yeah, your default profile. Yeah, that's good. And what we're going to do, so first of all, there were some changes as to how you can start the, the Rufadium. And the last yeah. video, we mentioned that there were three steps that you had to do because you have to first figure out the driver, then start the Rufadium and so on. But after talking uh, to him and kind of like uh, saying that it is a little bit better to have something a little bit more simple, he actually made some changes. I was like very glad because now the way how we do this, first of all, you include the library itself as you would. And then now the only thing you have to do is to set up your Chrome Pro, uh, your Chrome object by saying new Rufadium. And that's it. It defaults to Chrome, but you can change the driver here by saying, for example, MS Edge driver.exe, for example, you can do that too. So, or you can say Chrome driver, if the path is in a different location, you can just set a directory if you have already downloaded it, right? And now after you have your Chrome driver, if, if you're gonna use the default, in my case, I'm gonna use the default, it's just Chrome driver, and it's gonna be right next to my uh, script. Then after you do that, then you just have to load a, a page up. So for that, you just go ahead and do chrome.new session and you're good to go. So now- I wanted to, yeah. to mention one other thing which you had told me before, right, was we had to be very careful to go get the Chrome driver that matched the version of Chrome that we had. Yes. <laughs> and, and we, you had gotten one slightly newer and it didn't work. And so exactly. then we had to go back and that one. Now this actually takes care of that, right? Which right, so this is the other part that I was gonna mention. So those are the two, the, the, well, we're gonna talk about three new things. First of all, how he simplified the process to now be a two-step process and that it defaults to Chrome. So you don't have to be setting additional stuff. You say new Rufadium, new session, you're good to go, right? And the second part is, if you don't have the Chrome driver, as you can tell right here, I do have the AHKs for the libraries, but I do not have the driver. It would go ahead and define which one is your version and it would download it for you. So in my case, just by running this script, it would go ahead and create a new file with the Chrome driver in it. So let's just run it, it was doing it. And as you can tell here on the left side, now I have the Chrome driver and it loaded my profile. Well, is, this is the default profile. So in this case, now, as you can tell, not only I did not have to specify many things, 
but also it downloaded the driver for me. And it would do the same for the MS Edge driver. So right now, Rufadium only works with MS Edge and Chrome drivers. So now that I notice this, well, there's the next part. How do I actually set a profile here? The way how it works is that you have a section of the Chrome object that is called capabilities. And you can set different capabilities in it. One of the capabilities is to set a profile. And one of the functions that we were working on is named exactly set profile. So what we're going to do before creating the session, and that's the reason why it's not actually automated like you create a new Chrome and that's it, is because some things you might want to do them before creating the session. In this case, this is one of them. You would use the Chrome object capabilities, which is an object that is inside it. And that object has a few functions. One of them is set profile, user profile. This is the function itself. It has two parameters. The first one is the user, uh, the profile uh, that you want to use. That's the thing that is going to change the most. Uh, so if you want to use the default profile or... That's just um, a path, correct? Well, it's the name of the folder. So this is okay. the part. So let me try to explain that. And yeah. right next to it is the user data directory. So Chrome has a data directory in which you can have several profiles on it and you can access that by going to the which is local need app data. So local app data, uh, Google, Chrome, user data. And in here, this user data folder, this one here, contains many profiles. This one is profile one or the default profile. You see those two? So in my case, I only have two profiles. It might be several of them, right? But the user data usually doesn't change that much. It's usually in the same location, right? And for that reason, we decided to put it as a secondary parameter and an optional one. So that one is just like, you know. By default, it will use that. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So basically, if you are there, uh, profile name is going to be blank. The user data is blank as well. But you can change those two. If you don't change the profile, uh, if you don't change the profile, it would use your default profile. If you don't change the user data there, it would also use the data there. So let's just, just go ahead. a little for some yeah. people. Uh, yeah, so, there you go. Thank you. right. So here we go. Here, I would just say, use my default um, profile. I could leave it blank and it would do the same, I assume, I will double check that. But if I run it now, you will notice that instead of the blank profile that we saw before, now I have my profile here with my... Um, can you move? They're not going to be able to see that because of the webcam, I think. Uh-huh. Oh, but let me put it here. There we go. Thank you. Right. So now you will notice that what is loaded here is my profile. It's not blank as it was before. Right. And it actually loaded my the pages that were open. And I know that wow. it's actually changing, oh. right? Because it is going to load whatever is there. But now yeah. if I want to change it, let's go ahead and do profile one, which was the other, the other folder, right? And when I run it, it would go ahead and open a, another profile. In this case, right. uh, this That's is a different profile. One, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. So here um, you would see that it is actually opening a different profile. Also, it, it doesn't have the... War not warning, but you know, thing at the top. Remember, it said, Oh, like, yeah, this, yeah, 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 it's true. Automated by whatever. Yeah. yeah, let me double check something. So, if I comment this out and I go ahead and run it, actually, it is not saying no, anything. Oh, hold on, let me let me double check because it might be because page navigate to google.com, for example. Uh, I have to verify if I have to put the HTTPS because maybe Usually I... You do. Yeah. yeah, but basically uh, we discussed that having it automatically put that if it is not there. Oh, cool. so, now, so now the way how the system is working, because we fixed that um, at the beginning, it was not loading any, pr any, any capabilities by default. Uh, and as it right. was not loading That's anything, it right. was just telling you like, this is being automated. Right. But now how it, the, the system itself is loading as a default capability and it's just not saying that any longer. And the, uh, one of the things that we discovered is that if you set a profile like this, it would also not say it. So uh, what we could do is just navigate to a different page. 
Let's go ahead and paste here a different page, whatever. And I will try to navigate. And now it should load to that particular page automatically. So again, it is, it is working as intended in the profile. If I had been logged in in this profile to Netflix, it would actually be inside you know, my account and load to that page automatically. So that's the, the big thing about working with these uh, profile sessions and so on, because you would be yeah, logged well, in and, in any, any page that you had been logged in. And what you or I were so excited about was, if that's the case, we can grab the cookies right. and then go do our own API calls you know, with those Later cookies. Later on, and yeah. We're, we're going to have to make a very complicated video on that one, explaining those HTTP cookies that aren't visible to the DOM. <laughs> if I remember, you were explaining it to me. It yeah, was, it, it, like, it is very... Couple, some if they're set a certain way, they're not available to the DOM. So even though with uh, auto control, we were grabbing cookies, it was missing like two out of like 40. Yeah. Um, and But those two were critical ones that they're for security reasons, these sites will use. That is uh, right. And that just made it, made it Right. So in general, uh, the of course, you have to be careful with this kind of things because it is, it is um, you have to be mindful of the security risks that are involved in having your profile open to automation, right? So you have to be careful with that. And basically, yes, your cookies are there. But for example, in our case, there are some times that I want to scrape a page and it is actually a page that I could just do API calls, but they would require your cookies, right? Um, instead of scraping the page itself, you know, using regular expression matches and so on like that, it's better just to send them a, an API call and I need the cookies. So in that case, we would just connect get the cookies, and then just go ahead and do the API calls, which oh. is faster, you know? Right, yeah, and that was where on Udemy, you know, every every week when I'm doing the newsletter, I get, hey, here's who bought this month so far, and it's paginated, and I realized I was looking at the traffic with Fiddler going, oh, here's the first page, the second page, third page, I don't need to load, and it was just the XML, I'm sorry, JSON. Yeah, and exactly. Like, oh, this is awesome. Unfortunately, it had these cookies that we couldn't find exactly. with auto control, and that, and I spent I don't can't tell you how many hours like looking at this, going <laughs> screaming. You know, <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the funny thing is that right now you are in a position to navigate to the Udemy, to the Udemy page and then just click over and over the button and get the information. Right. But in our case, as we know, it is better to use the API call, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we talked about that in a couple of their videos of. Hey, there's the best, quote unquote, best approach. And then there's a, I need it now option. Exactly. The fast approach. Like I need it right now. You can do it in a few well, lines of code with this particular yeah. library. Well, they also have an export button for that thing. And so that's just, you know, my, it's not terrible. It's just one of those, I know I can automate this. So yeah, I really wanted to do it. But um, now the other one, I don't know if we, if you've looked into this, but can can you demonstrate? Can we connect to a, a running instance of you know of something from that we let's say we well let me let me rephrase the question. First off, can you connect to a running instance of Chrome? No, I okay. do not think so because okay. Chrome driver, the Chrome driver executable has to launch that right. instance. Okay. If it doesn't so, launch it, I don't think it is possible. Okay. I'm not so, sure. so option B, mm -hmm. can we make a shortcut? where, hey, it's up in my taskbar. When I go to click it, I'm actually clicking to launch a script that will launch WebDriver and Chrome. So mm -hmm. later I can connect. connect. Yes, that is definitely possible because okay. you see how I just created a new instance here. So I could definitely have this as a shortcut uh -huh. that when I click, it right. can have the Chrome icon, whatever. And when I click on it, it would just run this. And with my default profile, right? Uh huh. And when you run it, it would just simply open Chrome with your profile, right? And you didn't even notice the difference, right? So basically, definitely possible. Like that, and yeah. and it, now and now it is already in a in a in a right. situation where Chrome driver can actually connect to it. Yes. Yeah, it's it's similar to the launching Chrome in debug mode in concept. Exactly, concept, but, but the. We're, we're going to, hey, I'm going to make my shortcut to it to this way. So yes. that way I can later connect to it. Connect to it in, with any other script that I have. So, but in general, yeah, it would look exactly the same. You can just set an, a, a shortcut that links to right. this uh, AHK, but it has the icon of Chrome, for example, so that you don't feel like, oh, this is a, nah, you can do it however you want, but it is really possible. 
And now with three lines of code, you can do, you know, very interesting capabilities down there, you know? Ah, and by the way, as you mentioned, if you have this quick solution, remember that you can navigate to the page, right? So you go to navigate to, you know, Udemy. And now you have page get uh, selector all or get selector. You put your selector, the button that you have. So I don't know, button, you know, A1 or whatever, whatever it is, the selector that click. And now this actually would click on the button that you want cool. and download whatever you want. And then just do that as a loop, loop five or whatever, you know, like you can definitely use selectors, which is great because now you can definitely say like loop page, get selector. And this is the selector of how many pages are there. Right. Yep. Pages, selector dot value, which is going to give you how, what the number is and just click every single time and download, download yeah, whatever you want. Right. So basically now, and this is the power of this particular library. Now you can automate stuff. If, if, even though you and I would go with the API, right. if you need this really fast, you can do it with a, a few lines of code and you download the, the, the file and do whatever you want with it. So basically, this thing opens a lot of possibilities. And I really love one thing. This navigate function waits for it to finish before doing the other stuff. Yeah, which, well, I, I'd still say I'm very interested in like sites like LinkedIn that are buggy, you know, and how yeah, I yeah. know with IE, I had to build some very custom loops to detect when it really finished. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes it didn't finish loading. That was the problem, right? Yeah. So, I'm curious how, how this will handle that. Um, in any case, we are going to continue doing more videos about the new capabilities because he made a few changes there. And probably at that time, we go ahead and talk about those as well. So that's good. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. You're welcome. Bye.